Which aspect of rock and roll would you like to know about, sir? I suppose because I've been here for as long as I've been here, I've recognised the changes that have taken place in London in the last 20, 30 years. And particularly in the last 10 years, it's become even more international than it was previous to that. The premise of the film is supposed to reflect contemporary London and all the nefarious, dodgy activities that have taken place due to an evolving city. We're shooting quite a lot around the centre of London. We're down on the riverside, quite a lot down in the east end of London. We're up in the big, big sports stadium. I think within the film, by the use of the locations, you're seeing, you know, guys London. This is sort of my spin on the conspiracy of reasons as to why London has become as desirous as it's become. When I first uh, knew London was just after the Second World War and there were bomb buildings everywhere and it was all grey and it was all black. But then it became quite a depressed city during the 70s and early part of the 80s. Over the last 10, 15 years, London has changed beyond all recognition. London is going through its biggest rebuild since the 18th century. London's changed. You know, everywhere, as we know by the number of cranes around the town, it's being developed. It's going through something of a renaissance in terms of building. But not just that, in terms of the amount of people that wish to live here and where those people come from. A lot of people with money have decided to descend upon London and consequently this has fueled enormous cultural changes. The wealthy and expensive parts of London are now extreme. Some huge properties owned by relatively small numbers of people, some of them Americans, a lot of them from Eastern Europe. You know, a few years ago, when the big oligarch Russians came to town, they completely changed the rules of business. If they wanted something, they didn't haggle the price, they doubled the price. And that was a new phenomenon that sort of took off. Somebody told me the other day that 80% of houses, over 10 million, being bought in London are being bought by Russians. The new immigrants from Eastern Europe, again, changed the city, become a 24-hour city. It's a very exciting, it's a very colourful place to live. You look around, you see all the building that's taking place around London. It looks like cranes are breeding and property prices continue to rocket. It just keeps going up and needless to say, because there's so much money involved in that, there's a lot of inevitably humans are humans and human nature percolates and takes advantage of that situation. You never get bored of working in London because every time you think you might have found all the good locations, you never have. There's always new ones cropping up. The lo locations are never really that difficult. It's just a question of more over the number of them. And the fact we have been, um, you know, moving pretty well every other day. We've been to lots of different locations around London. I live in London, and you know, I'm seeing a whole different aspect to it. We're shooting quite a lot inside houses and in streets, inside smart restaurants. Oh my God, you're a mess. I'm sure that the film will reveal a kind of surface of London, but also the kind of underbelly of London. We're in Battersea Power Station. This was one of the big, big power stations in London. I remember it belching smoke all over London. Power station used to power most of London. It shut down about 20 years ago. Now it's a ruin, and I hope they knock it down, but I think they're so reluctant to trash this famous landmark. I've always seen it as a landmark, but then suddenly you're there and you're right inside. Of course, it becomes like a country in itself. It's a pretty sinister warehouse, this. Bad things happen here. And here it is, just standing here. And they say they're going to develop it and turn it into cinemas and restaurants and hotels and apartments, but it's still here, sad. The Royal Hospital, which has an interesting history, built in 1680, I believe, by Sir Christopher Wren. Christopher Wren was a Freemason. You'll see an obelisk down there, which essentially represents the sun, or positive, and you'll see a dome above the roof, which represents the moon, or woman, and negative. When the Freemasons built these buildings, they knew a lot more about the universe than possibly your contemporary architects do. Spitalfields Market. Here we're replicating a Russian building site where uh, one of our heroes, Yuri, is uh, under one of his billion dollar constructions. Small time, backhand and crook. I think he's trying to make fool out of you. And underneath that construction there is what's left of Spitalfields Market. It's not what I remember of Spitalfields Market. As you can see out there, it looks rather like New York. It's the first 
real evidence to illustrate that London is sort of becoming a New York. We're in a whole hospital that's been disused for the last 15 years, right bang in the centre of London. And it's going to about to be the most expensive real estate in the whole of London. And we're using it as our crack house. Pete, where's the painting? Yeah, we're in here for two or three days. This hospital is literally slam bang in the mid centre of London. So property prices around here are about £600 a square foot. But once this is done up in two years from now, the idea is, is that it will go for £4,000 a square foot, which will give you some idea as to the increase in price in an area such as this. In fact, our office is only two streets away from here. And we bought the office a year ago. It's now worth about double the price it was when we bought it. This is a very clear illustration of really what, what the film's about, actually. Yeah. We're in Wimbledon. The location does have something to do with the changing face of London, actually, doesn't it? On this film, we managed to film at Wembley, which is a bit of a coup because no one's been in there since the um, stadium's been all done out. Start on the reset. And thirdly, with legal fees, transactions, building consent, you have got these huge spaces in there. It just had a, a wonderful cinematic quality that uh, we got very excited about. Action. Got £650 million pounds to build the stadium. It's an illustration of how much money is going into construction in London and there's money being spent on some very expensive buildings. We're at West India Dock Pier, which is sort of sandwiched in between Millennium Dome and Canary Wharf. We picked this location mainly because of the Canary Wharf backdrop because we're filming on Uri's boat, who's our sort of billionaire in the film. We chose it simply because it sort of gives off the glitz and glamour of his world. Funny, actually, we're just reading an article upstairs on the front cover of The Standard. It's about how councillors are taking backhanders for building consent. That's exactly what this scene is about, and, and this is a great illustration of that. In these buildings have been put up. It looks like Chicago out there. London didn't used to look like that. Now it does. The shooting here, I'm kind of getting a bird's eye view of a city that feels very familiar to me, but it's actually, it's a complete mystery at the same time. I had dinner up on the fourth floor, and I looked out over the Thames, and it's a view that I've never seen anything similar to it before. Yeah, and people sort of knock it, right? But what was here before, it was just, you know, whole shit all. It's this constantly evolving London. Whoa! Hell, it's really a movie about the dynamism in London, the building developments, and the way the old are being replaced by the new. And this is, I think, is a brilliant updating of London with the new kind of wealth that has come in. It's just the world that I feel comfortable in, and I'm very happy to be doing it again. Cut. Lovely. There. Moving Cut on. There. Okay, that was nice and quick. Keep it like that. <laughs>